So Glenn Arnold, like I said, he's with Ohio State University Extension. Um, Glenn conducts field research on using liquid livestock manure to replace commercially purchased fertilizer on wheat and corn. Applying manure to growing crops creates an in-season window for manure application and results in less manure being applied in the fall months. As livestock producers strive to make better use of the nutrients in manure, they're hauling manure greater distances. Capturing the value of the nutrients in the manure can help pay for the additional manure hauling expense. And as a little more background on Glenn, he was raised on a small crop and livestock farm in Southeast Ohio. He taught vocational agriculture at Randolph Southern High School in Lynn, Indiana for five years and was a county extension educator in Putnam County, Ohio for 22 years. So Glenn, take it away. All right. Thank you, Erica. That just means I'm getting pretty old, I think is what that really means. Well, we want to spend some time today talking about some uh, thoughts on the uh, use of manure, reasons you would transport it great distances, and uh, how a pipeline might play a role with that. All right. Trying to forward, there we go, my PowerPoint. Essentially, uh, livestock farms continue to grow in size as technology improves and allows for uh, one or two or three operators to manage more animals. So this has just been an example where one of these swine buildings was built originally, then a second one was added. Um, you know, when you get more animals in one spot, you're gonna end up with more manure. And it's just a matter of uh, the way the numbers work. And, um, you know, we've got pretty good ideas of how much manure hogs produce or cows produce or chicken or beef. But again, you know, the fact remains, so uh, we have to move it and land apply it uh, to make it work out for everyone. Our dairy farms generally are getting larger. I know we're getting fewer as uh, farmers retire and smaller farmers uh, exit the industry, but whenever a dairy is built or uh, a larger dairy seeks to uh, get bigger, you know, there's an expansion and it's just pretty common. So we get more manure in a single spot. And in Ohio, uh, we know we have to collect by law all the manure, the urine, the you know, milk house water, the runoff, silage leachate, everything's collected. So it's pretty easy to end up with uh, ponds as far as big as 20, 30 million gallons. And in this particular instance, we have a boat in the center that's doing the agitation. And then we have um, not one, but two um, commercial manure applicators over here on the, right, the left-hand side of the screen. We have two commercial manure applicators who are busy at work. Generally, the most common way to, that I see that we move large amounts of manure great distances is to use main drag or main hoses like this. Uh, in this instance, this is about a 10 inch main line and you can see it's been placed down the county right away. And that's very, very common. Our township trustees in Ohio are pretty on board with this idea of putting these hose, <coughs> hoses down through because that no, they know that means fewer trucks on the road, uh, gets an opportunity to get those done. And, um, seems to work pretty well for us. And they've also been very generous about allowing us to cross roads. Um, usually township trustees will allow most applicators or most livestock producers to cross our um, township roads. This is just an example of where a mainline hose is gonna cross. And this is a um, the reason the applicator puts the uh, plastic panels underneath there is just to keep the hose elevated off the road so that if there are any sharp rocks sticking up, uh, they won't vibrate until they're inside the hose because these hoses do vibrate ever so slightly when manure is going through them. This is another common uh, local thing here in my area of Northwest Ohio. And this was a crossover that was put in specifically for a manure hose. And you can see even a wooden pallet or a wooden bridge that was built here by the commercial manure applicator. So again, he or she can uh, put their hose across the road running underneath. It doesn't interfere with traffic. And that's somewhat commonly done when they know there's going to be a, a routine need every year or two or three to put a hose across. Uh, when they know the road's going to be under some sort of repair or construction, that's a good time to put those in. So again, just an opportunity to uh, take advantage of this. Also, we have a lot of applicators that can use existing crossovers or existing culverts that are out there. And in this instance, for example, you've got it going through a culvert and you can see the uh, 
rock that was put in place to hold the bank. And you can see they put a sleeve around the hose to protect the hose from the rocks that could be in the bottom of that. Again, every county or every area of the country would have perhaps different regulations, but I'm just showing you what we're doing in Northwest Ohio. And then there's, here's an example of a commercial applicator that just crossed a small ditch and just lay the mainline hose right across there. Again, if no sharp objects, uh, he thought they didn't have anything to be too concerned about, but not every jurisdiction might allow something like this, but it's relatively common in our area. We always need to understand that hoses are always at a risk of a failure. Uh, this is just a drag hose that burst finally. And uh, again, out in the middle of a field like this, so you can see it was uh, one of the first times across the field as there's only been three passes made, it looks like. So the hose went relatively fast and that's just a risk that we all have. And if this hose had been down in a ditch or uh, under a bridge or something like that, uh, certainly would have created a major spill issue that would have to have been dealt with pretty rapidly. Manure tankers are still the most common method of manure transport in the state. That's because we have a lot more um, pork farmers and beef farmers and other types of livestock farmers than we do dairy farmers. So again, many, many farmers have commercial manure application, or I shouldn't say commercial, but they have their own manure tankers. They, they haul when they can. It's not unusual for them to spend, to empty a single double wide hog building. Not unusual, unusual for them to spend 40 hours or, or better doing that. That's you know eating an entire week up. As we move manure further, we encourage people to go greater distances. So in Ohio, we see a lot of manure that's finding its way on to 6,000 gallon manure tankers. And this is just an example on a gravel road of a tanker pulling up to a frack tank. And then they're gonna unload the manure into the frack tank and then uh, it'll go out onto the field. It's actually being applied during the growing season. The only point I make is that this dust is pretty much going straight down the field. Uh, that road is pointed due north. But had that dust been blowing onto the adjoining house off to the right, they might not have been as uh, pleased, you know, to see 30, 40, 50 uh, semi trucks show up and uh, deposit manure there. Here's another example of a manure tanker emptying. In this instance, you know, you've got a fairly narrow road in a rural area. You can see the cornfields on the right. Uh, we've got a little bit of, of uh, manure that's been splattered here at the bottom. But generally, most oncoming traffic or people coming up behind, because these don't have much for berms to worry about, uh, would be able to get around these with relative ease. So again, this is pretty common. We just dump it off into a, uh, a uh, frack tank, which is going to pump into another tank, and then the large pump taking it out to the uh, field. But again, this uh, if you have agricultural people that you're working with, getting around these types of tankers, I don't think it's a major issue with us for the most part. This is another one, it's in a similar situation. Only I would point out the road is a little bit narrower. Uh, getting around that, either coming either way, might be presenting more of a challenge than some drivers want to, uh, to look at. But again, the narrowness of the roads is certainly a concern. And then the other one is road damage. Um, our manure tankers are probably harder on roads than uh, the semi trucks are. But as you're pouring off to the edges, uh, road damage is certainly uh, an issue with our township trustees and the other taxpayers who, who have to uh, resurface our roads. A lot of times when a, a new facility is being built and the concrete's being poured, the concrete trucks will do a lot of damage to a road. And then as you have silage trucks and manure vehicles and haylage trucks, uh, you'll have more damage being done. So it's, um, it's a sore issue with a lot of people. It's uh, a thing that gets livestock farms off on the wrong foot with neighbors and communities. But it is something that we see fairly often in our areas, especially on our township roads, which are the least solid of uh, county, township, and uh, highway roads. This one I think presents more of an issue that uh, I think is important. And that is we've got a semi that's uh, again, dumping into a frack tank. Um, but if you look, we have oncoming traffic 
that's coming and the semi's pointing into it and we're not uh we don't really have any orange cones to uh to um caution the drivers they're finding their own ways around and many would but if uh, there were an accident i think the liability issues that are associated with uh, trying to to run semis into frack tanks on major roads highly traveled roads you know there could be two semis meet in that road and maybe they wouldn't be uh able to get things under control so i think we always want to be aware of how we open ourselves up to liability issues with that and then even though this person did a i thought i think a very good job with his manure application not everybody likes that you know you've got a rural home with a nice pond no obvious livestock facilities around it no obvious grain so unlikely to be a farmer and they might not have a much of an appreciation for how manure is handled out in our rural areas. And these were the signs that often got erected when uh, farms were built, uh, just no mega farms. And you see it today with, you know, no windmills, no solar powered farms, no this, that, and the other. There's an awful lot of signage that goes out in our rural areas anytime something new comes along. I looked uh, at what I thought were some um, things about some sort of a fixed manure transport hose versus uh, um, the soft hoses we generally run. And I got, I've put down here, be located where it will provide the most benefit. So if that's a, a hard to access field, or uh, perhaps you would shave off a lot of miles on a truck, if it were uh, across an area that you couldn't do with vehicles, just something to think about. And I put down um, perhaps in that at a satellite pond or maybe even a manure processor as they talk about possibly building those in Ohio. I've got down secondly, be of size and strength uh, to handle volumes and pressures 10 years from now. Um, you're talking really about sewer grade pipe and connectors. Um, you know, what we're doing today is quite a bit more pressure and volume than what we did five years ago. And perhaps what we do 10 years from now might be quite a bit more. We really don't know. I just know that the industry continues to evolve and grow. Just that uh, anything fixed like that would be, need to be cleaned out with a, with a uh, pig just to keep sand from settling in the bottom. And then I put down that we probably need to be a, below a frost line. That way, if there is moisture or water in the line, the low spot, uh, we wouldn't want it to to uh, crack due to uh, freezing of the ground in the winter months. And I just threw out what uh, some of the pipe sizes and flow rates are. You know, uh, again, going back 10 years, an eight inch pipe, 1600 gallons a minute that you could get through that sounds like a lot. But when you look at what the, what the uh, pumpers are looking at doing now, 10 and 12 inch, it's pretty common numbers that I hear as people upgrade every couple of years. And the volume that you can get through the larger pipes is pretty substantial. So if you're gonna take the time and investment to uh, put a uh, subsurface manure pipe in, you would certainly wanna build for the future, I would think. This is just an example of um, one of several that are in Ohio. This one's not very long, it's only a quarter mile long, but it's uh, when a dairy was built, he put one of these on the north end of the farm and one on the south so that the commercial manure applicators can come onto the farm, they can hook their pumps up uh, to the end of that pipe, and then that pipe gets them away from the farm. So, you know, for example, in dairy, uh, manure application starts just a minute if the first field's been cleared of silage. So you're going to have manure leaving the farm during the same time silage is coming onto the farm. So we just need to make sure that those trucks and, and the passage of the trucks isn't interfered with by the manure. So this is just that farmer's way of doing it or to build a subsurface manure line to get um, the uh, hoses away from the general farm itself. This is another, uh, just looking at this, I have to take this picture. This is not a manure line, but that's a natural gas line that went from Eastern Ohio to the city of Detroit, Michigan. But it would be ver very easy to visualize had there been several farmers that lived fairly close to that and it was a manure line itself, might be an opportunity to uh, move manure to distant fields, even if more than one farmer participated in the uh, use of the, of the hose. So whether that's an opportunity or not, 
just something to kind of keep thought of. This farmer here is actually side dressing corn. It's a dairy pond that he's pulling the manure out of. I put down a backhoe, but a trencher would probably be a more common tool used to put in um, the type of pipe we would do with uh, putting in the subsurface manure hose. I put down what I thought was positives for the livestock producer. And the first one here says less mess close to the farm, happy neighbors. Again, if they had unhappy neighbors when they built, uh, when the manure trucks are running in and out of the um, driveway, they're probably not gonna make them much happier. So if, if they don't see manure being applied, uh, I think that's gonna reduce the likelihood of them calling authorities and, and uh, having them question what's happening again. Less road damage. I know our township trustees are all for. Uh, anybody that puts uh, hoses down through township trustees right of ways, just because when roads get broken up by, uh, by a lot of traffic in a short period of time, when you've got manure trucks that are meeting each other on our rural roads, they're both going to ease off to the edge and that's going to be like more likely to break the road surface. And I put down reduced liability, fewer trucks on the road. And then there's that cost too. Um, we have some truckers that will deliver manure from manure source to the edge of a field for $125 an hour. But I've also talked to other people who said they'd never do it for less than $250 an hour. And again, and part of that depends on who owns the semi versus who owns the trailer and those types of things. And the USD just stands for US dollars. Another positive, you could depreciate the buried line because that's certainly a, um, a cost. And then I put down here also, save her from vandalism because we have had a few instances of brand new manure hoses who, that have broke um, that just there's hardly any explanation for it. So sometimes, uh, especially when it's at night, uh, there's been some suspicion that maybe somebody has helped with the uh, failure of the line. And then I've got down here, perhaps, you know, it would make more sense for a line like that if you could use the manure in season to help pay, uh, whether you be side dressing corn, whether you be uh, surf supplying manure to planted corn or plain manure to forages between cuttings. Those would all be examples. This video is just one of ours. We, we do a lot of side dressing in Ohio as we promote uh, the use of manure as an in-season um, way to save on nitrogen purchases. So this farmer is simply replacing his purchased fertilizer with um, a manure product that he already has on the farm. Again, just an opportunity. And again, this was a dairy farm. This one is just an example of uh, dairy manure being applied to alfalfa between cuttings. Again, fairly, fairly often done. But again, if, uh, if you had a fixed pipe to get out to that alfalfa field versus trucking the manure or having a commercial applicator lay out all the hoses necessary, could just be something to give some thought to. And then we do a lot of manure on wheat. It's just been a common thing. Uh, we do a lot of surface application of manure in the wheat every spring, and uh, it's, it's performed very, very well for us for the most part. I talked to a couple of manure applicators who do hook onto pipes and uh, they like them. They said it's faster. They don't have to bring as much hose to the site. They don't have to enroll as much. Uh, they su would suggest to have a, a connector every mile or so, and I think that would be true for clean outs as well. They like not having as many semi trucks on the road because of the cost for the driver and again the liability issue. Our commercial manure applicators usually get together for different things during the course of a year or two, and and again everybody comes up with a story of rolling a truck or some other thing that went terribly wrong uh, during the last season of manure application. So again, only unloading trucks along the roadside. And I emphasize roadside because we, that's where we do a lot of our work. We seldom put our semis out into the fields themselves unless it's for them to turn around. And by then they would be empty. And they thought it'd be less overall labor to have an underground pipe in place. Concerns I put down, would you outgrow the system? Um, you know, if when you installed something, you didn't think that boy in only, only six or eight years, the uh, operating volume might double or the operating pressure might double. 
you've got a, something that was installed that you thought 150 pounds of pressure would be plenty. And now your commercial mineral applicator is running around 250 pounds of pressure. There's a more opportunity that that pipe might fail. So the commercial applicator will then back down on their pressure, which backs down on their volume, which isn't as efficient for them. I put down here, you could lose access to the ground where the pipe was placed or where it was intended to provide manure to. Uh, permits, you know, do you need permits to cross ditches in your area, to cross streams, to uh, go under roads? I mean, every township is going to be a bit different. Every state, I'm sure, would be a diff lot different. And then I have down the initial costs. I called um, one of our local engineers and asked him what it would take to install 10-inch pipe across the field. And he thought a mile of that would be about 158400 for the pipe and the installation. But again, we're not crossing any ditches. We're not going under roads. We're not uh, spanning streams with that. We're just laying down the pipe. So, uh, you know, that's a number that you might vary quite a bit. But I also looked and I talked to our local, um, one of our local commercial dealers in uh, manure pipe. And they said, you know, you get 12 inch soft diameter hose for $96,000 for a mile, or you could get 10 inch for $72,000 for a mile. And of course, you'd have to have the hose carts that would go with that. So kind of gives you an idea, at least right now, what the price difference is between those. And I think my final slide, that there are pros and cons of a fixed manure transport pipe, but just know that costs to transport manure will likely continue to increase. Things have gone up quite a bit in the industry when people look at pipe costs, uh, hose costs, things like that. I think liability costs will continue to rise. You just need to do the best you can at planning for the future and be sure that uh, whatever emergency spill plans you have would include an emergency spill plan for that buried line. And just also as livestock farmers grow in size, we have to travel greater distances for feed sources. That means our manure is gonna travel greater distances for application.